What's up, guys? Subs Eric here, back for another Avad review. Today, a Kiyun Avad review. You know, quite a high low player. He's actually sitting very, very high low right now. 1500 LP. So he must be. I don't know, like in the in the top 10, top 20 at least for sure. Obviously doing very, very well and always a consistent, strong TFT player when he's, you know, playing the game. Sometimes he takes some sets off, as most TFT players do if your name's not like K3 Soju or something. But the reason I want to watch Kiyun today is because he played a comp that I'm very, very interested in, one that I have not actually got the chance to play myself. I haven't really found uh, a good spot for it yet, and so I'm uh, I'm interested to see what Kiyun's spot looked like that uh, that made him interested in playing this comp and uh, and how it went. Um, so so far we have kind of like a few different openers here. Yeah, he's holding onto the Vagar in case we get some kind of good augment uh, to play around Vegar. Uh, we're also holding on this Shapeshifter opener here. We're gonna pick up the Lilia too as well for some idea of playing like maybe an Ari setup here. We even, you know, have like Spark that you really want the cloak for adaptive. You know, we'll see. We do have this full Gwinsu here, which is maybe a little bit of direction uh, towards something, but we'll see. First augment here, Hedge Fund, Vanguard Crown, and level up here. Nothing I'm actually too, too hyped about, I would say. Um, Level Up and Hedge Fund have been both buffed this patch, so they're actually, like, fine. Uh, they used to be, like, quite bad statistically, but but they're fine now. So I, I could see myself taking Hedge Fund or Level Up if uh, if the situation calls for it. Vanguard Crown is just not very good. Shimmer Scale Essence, though, and yeah, you see this. The second Kiyun sees Shimmer Scale Essence, he's like, okay, I'm taking this. This augment is so, so strong. Um, it's still very, very strong, even after current nerfs to, to Moguls and Gambler's Blade. Let's actually pull up a little uh, stats check right now. tft.op.gg slash metatrans slash augments. Um, so let's pull up this and we'll just look for Shimmer Scale Essence. Um, not all the Shimmers. Yeah, still still a pretty good uh, average, 4.36. Not like insane. And I'm interested actually, you know, we can, we can filter this as you go um, higher in like uh, in different ranks. I mean, throw like GM plus in here just to see um, how it does even higher elo. And yeah, wow, the higher elo you go. I mean, this is obviously like a small sample, but once you go to really, really high elo, the statistics look uh, look very, very nice. Um, the only slightly sus thing here is we have just a Nico as our all that shimmers holder. You could, you could honestly, um, yeah, you could honestly maybe not even um, put this onto Nico. You could actually, like, I wouldn't be that surprised if it's better on uh, on Blitzcrank here over the Nico, because Blitzcrank is just a monster. Uh, but Kion actually, he has this Gwinsu's Rage Blade. He has all the Shimmers in this spot here. So he's going to call uh, Jinx, which actually makes a lot of sense. I think my head was covering it up potentially, but he calls Jinx in this spot, which is interesting, right? Uh, if you looked at the thumbnail, you probably know that this is not a Jinx game, um, but it makes sense how we ended up in the comp that we ended up in. Also, what the fuck is that shop? Um, I mean, I really kind of want to just say fuck it. I don't really want to put this on Warwick is the problem, but I am kind of down to put this on Blitzcrank here with Blitzcrank pair and Warwick here, but we'll see. I think Kewen might just say, you know what? I need to play for strongest board here. I can't, uh, you know, be in a spot where I'm I'm not playing, you know, strongest board with uh, with this Shimmer Scale. Uh, I, I want to win every single fight that I can, especially because I'm on a streak now. And then Nico's actually doing fine, better than I would have thought, because I, I do think of her as more of like a supportive uh, tank. You can't sell Blitz pair, right? Okay, we're, we're just, ooh, whoa. That's a play from, that's a play and a half from Kuhn. Eight gold here, the double pre-level in this spot. That is nuts here. Um, okay, I mean, it allows you to potentially find better units. If, uh, you know, the idea is that we're playing Jinx to roll this game, I think it makes sense. We do really need to be making gold this round if possible. So I think we need to sell some of this stuff. Obviously keep Shapeshifter in. Fitting Portal in feels really, really nice here. Um, though uh so ooh, are we not making gold this round as well this i mean we're, we're getting paid back in all that shimmers value sure but not making econ here feels quite bad i would say keen looking at actually just full, making 10 by selling his entire bench here and i'm i'm not exactly against it uh considering our econ spot here at least we're 100 streaking here if we can win the next two i think our, our econ won't be in too bad of a spot uh, the obvious pickup here is Gargoyle. There's also, I think, a Wukong with a belt on Kira, so that'd be nice. Oh my god, we're gonna get a three-cost Gargoyle here. I mean, this is the best possible situation. Uh, this is all that you could ever ask for. It's nice, it's smart from uh, from Kion that he opted to actually, you know, play for this Gargoyle slam. I mean, I, you know, obviously it... Uh, it's pretty easy to do when you have the Gwinsu as your other slam, uh, but this is smart to go for because chain is not that high priority of a component off carousel. Pretty easy to get a chain off your first carousel and getting this puts us in an amazing spot here. We're gonna fit Scholar onto our board. Uh, and yeah, we're just gonna stick with this Nico. I mean, I honestly, 
obviously Blitzcrank is a monster and you know, Kuhn is still actually holding out for potentially the Blitzcrank 3, I think, or the Blitzcrank 2. I think the second we find another Blitzcrank, he would certainly consider moving items over. Um, though, yeah, and he's not gonna make gold. Wow, I mean, this game is actually, I'm really, really surprised by Kuhn's priority so far this game to not make gold. But he's holding out on a lot of options. This is wild. I like this a lot, though. L look at the left side of his bench, and you can start to see the idea of how we actually get into the comp that we get into this game. He's holding on to Cassiopeia's, and he's holding on to Elise's here. And obviously, we have the uh, the Jace as well. He's saying, you know what? There's actually a world where I play around shapeshifters this game, which I think is so smart. I think so many people are quick to sell these pairs in spots like this, um, and you know, just to play for one opener here. But I mean, I think Hyun's actually going to get very, very rewarded in this spot by by playing a little bit flex, keeping his options open here. Picks up the Gambler's Blade here, which is obviously just going to go on the unit with a Gwinsu. We can start selling some of this stuff um, just so that we, you know, make sure that we have enough space to actually pick up orbs here. Um, yeah, it feels a little rough even to hold all of this stuff. So yeah, he's going to sell the Nomsi here. I think this makes sense. We maybe need Nomsi down the line, but we'll see. Uh, these items here... I'm not too hyped about any of these. Uh, like, if you're playing for something like uh, Jinx... Yeah, I mean, ugh, these are these are kind of rough. It could just be a Morellos that you throw onto a secondary unit here and look for sword item onto Jinx is maybe the idea. The, you do end up losing the Giant's Belt as a potentially a tank item, though, if you do that. Random Minor Effect here. And yeah, he's actually just going to make the Sterax here. Wow. I mean, I, I think this makes sense as a as a slam. And it's it's very, very smart for Shapeshifter in as well, like we are talking about. That can be the board here on level 6. And he's still just going to continue to play around the the uh, the 3 portal for now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Sterax, Sterax is like a pretty eh item it's it's an okay tank item it's certainly worse than some of the other uh you know like belt items that you can get but it's decent you know it's it's serviceable and it's it's not that much worse than something like war mugs this is actually really really off that we're fighting this person who has ascension as their charm because we end up losing to them that is so so rough here uh okay little buddy's unified combat caster interesting uh choices here we don't have all, well, yeah, I mean, we have the Gargoyles. Unified tends to be pretty bad when you're playing Gargoyles, so I would lean towards Combat Caster here. He's thinking about maybe even Little Buddies, which is shocking to me. I don't really want to take Witchcraft or Portal Plus One, so yeah, he's just going to uh, grab the uh, Combat Caster there. Um, and wow, I mean, even from this spot, right, we're rolling on uh, on six. This means, and yeah, you can you can see the pivot come out here. Um, Kuhn knows that he's going to play a Shapeshifters game here. Rolls down a bit uh, deeper, even further, to try to... Um, Get extra units. This actually sucks because uh looks like we can still maybe make gold. Yeah, that we can't actually hold on to extra cinders. But we are okay, finally. I don't have to tiptoe around it anymore. We are playing a shapeshifters, uh, a vertical shapeshifter uh Cassiopeia and Cinder reroll game. This takes me way back to the uh you guys know the first patch of this set. I mean, unless you guys started the set a little bit later, but you know, first patch of the set, everybody was playing around this. I wonder if we move items here off of Nico onto the Swain here. Uh Nico is kind of the preferred tank just because she's a stronger unit. Um and ooh, I kind of like this. We already pick up the Karma, so we're just gonna play around the Karma instead of Cinder. Cinder is such a bad unit, uh statistically and just uh, in all things. Um that yeah, he's just gonna say, who who really even cares about playing Cinder on this board here? I'm gonna look at uh though he's gonna make cinder 2 interesting i mean huh surprising to me that we would make cinder 2 but not play it especially because like if we're making it this means we're going to play cinder later wild uh we have the rod open here we have basically Gwinsu Gwinsu already, so we are looking for our last item here. Cloak is fine for something like some MR Shred, especially on something like a Shivana, right? An Ionic Spark would be really good. She is now much more of like an AP fighter type unit. We're gonna roll each round for Charm, and wow, this is a deep roll here. But we do kind of get rewarded in this dummy that gives us gold, and hitting the Nico 2 is really, really big here. And we can start to sell a lot of this other stuff that doesn't matter that much. Even the Karma, it's gonna take so long for her to get into the board, especially because we have so much more rolling that we have to do on six here. But the hope is at least that we can win this fight and that Moguls and the uh the gambler's blade can replenish our gold a bit here hopefully we get moguls proc here it's actually pretty close 32 stacks yeah i mean we got we we netted more gold here from the fact that we had the uh the the dummy that generates gold so it's fine but yeah i mean i imagine we're gonna sit uh oh this does literally nothing our entire board's two starred i don't know if you can roll any deeper than 30 gold though like rolling for another charm is gonna be really really tough i i like generally how kyun has spent his econ um this stage why is that a callista two? Oh my god okay and they have uh little buddies that's kind of crazy they don't actually have that many little buddies on their board i mean they have like 
four four costs on their board, I think. Uh, maybe three. So they actually don't have a ton of little buddies here. But that is, uh, wow. I mean, that's subscription service for you. That is subscription service in a good scenario. I've had some subscription services that are uh, how, uh, not not so good, but that's okay. In any case, we're four streak here. We only have four of these Cassiopeias. I'm a little apprehensive about that, uh, about our spot, um, but okay. Pick up another rod here. I mean, ideally you want Gumblade. Midnight Ritual, very, very good in a spot like this. We are going to just get a three-star unit here. Um, and he's just rolling down to, you know, try to pick up any duplicates that we can. We also have this Nasus already. Uh, Morello for the heel cut uh, or Spark. Um, we're gonna go for the Morello for the heel cut here onto the Syndra. She spreads it pretty well. You could also throw it onto uh, Shivana. Um, I feel like she spreads it quite well as well, but the idea maybe is that Syndra, uh, one can be like a duo carry if we throw this onto her and two um, is just like a good general holder of anti-heal because she hits a lot of units. All right, last augment here, probably a movable object. You could consider Final Ascension actually with the fact that our shapeshifter is gonna buy us a lot of time. I'm not that comfy with that. I, I would go immovable here, but I think Kuhn's just gonna do a stats check here. So we're about to see what uh, what the statistics tell him is stronger here. And yeah, he's gonna go for the immovable. Okay. Cassiopeia, I mean, I think this charm is fine. I do think, yeah, you absolutely roll down to 50 here. Um, you could, yeah, I don't think you dip below 50 right now, but you can you can start looking at dipping below 50 soon. We have seven Shivanas, uh, we have six um, Cassiopeias, and we have six Cinderas. So like next round, you know, if we find a seventh of Cassiopeia or Cindera, I'm quite happy to dip down to 40 gold. And then if we get another one, then dip down to 30 gold and then, you know, dip even further if we're, uh, yeah, like if we're if we're that close at that point. Look at this Cassio's damage though. Oh my God, 5k damage. She actually wins this fight versus Kog'Maw. To be fair, this is Kog'Maw everything two starred. And I think they had two duplicators. So I think they might've been down a combat augment. So, you know, not, uh, not so crazy in their spot. Got to sell something here. Mm, this is smart here. He doesn't want to sell Nikos, doesn't want to sell Cinders, but he can fit the Nasus in here. The only downside is if we want to play six shape, we're going to have to refine this Jace here. But the idea, I might have even just sold Nasus there. Uh, who cares about the Swain, right? You just keep rolling in the spot. We're one off a lot of stuff. I think you definitely rolled a 40 here. Oh, wow. That's crazy to me that we actually leveled in this situation. And it actually still ends up being quite bad because we have to still sell the Swain at the end. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I agree with the level to seven there. I think I would have just given up on the Swain in this spot. Uh, obviously, he wants to, to level there because the idea is that, well, if you level, you get an extra bench slot. Um, and so, you know, now you don't have to sell the Swain, but it's not like we're close to Swain three. That was our fourth Swain. I think you could have just given up on him there, but you know, the, the odds difference between six and seven, it's not the end of the world. What's a Cassiopeia with a bow there? I mean, oh, are we going to take a bow? Here? Okay, we're just gonna take tier here. I, I like this a lot better. Even, I'm surprised actually we even went for tier. I, I might've gone for sword, but maybe he's looking at, um, cause like sword could be Gumblade. He's looking at Archangels though, which is a pretty cool slam here. So let's see how that goes. I mean, just give up on the Swain man. Yeah, roll. Boom, there's our Cassio finally. We are now just one off Shivana three. So I think it's actually probably fine to wait out one round here, especially when we're this low at 20 gold. We do wanna look at pushing levels here and getting six, shape, six shapeshifter back in. And you can see Kuhn immediately goes for this. Uh, ooh, this is rough that we're fighting a pretty big Eternal Winter. What is that? Is that a Vex? I, can, I can't tell with all of the... No, it's a Morgana. Oh, it's a Golden Quest Morgana too with an Eternal Winter. Oh my God. That spot is disgusting. Eternal Winter, uh, Anima Visage, and um, what was their last item? Gargoyle or something like that? That, uh, that Morgana is insane. Uh, like she is just not going down. And I mean, yeah, Morgana too, Golden Quest. Oh man, what a, what a cool augment. I mean, uh, unbalanced? Cer certainly, certainly could call it that. Fun to play? Definitely, with, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, I'm curious about this Archangel's make onto Cassiopeia. I mean, I think we can do a quick stats. Uh, we can do just a quick explore here um, to see what, what the six say about Cassiopeia 3 with three items. Um, and then we can also throw in Four Shapeshifter here to filter out the stats a little bit and then just do two plus because obviously you don't want to only include Four Shapeshifter. This includes more and more and more. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say like, you know, that she's our primary carry, but I mean, you could just go to builds and look at it. Um, I mean, the statistics certainly actually seem to prefer something like triple. Yeah, I mean, the stats actually really don't like Gumblade. Interesting. Okay. I mean, yeah, the stats really say that something like this is really good, that maybe even uh, like getting a, a Lasquinsu would have been our best uh, 
item here, but I mean, sure, getting, uh, I mean, you can even, if you guys are curious, you can do Gambler's Blade uh, and then Gwinsu's Rage Blade and then look at the stats for this, but obviously it's going to be a little bit hard. Uh, you're you're going to have to bring the filter down a little bit if you want to see other stuff, but yeah, Archangels looks fantastic in the stats. Wow, even better than, uh, than Gwinsu's, though. Obviously, this is the world's smallest sample. Also, people ask, uh, you know, how do you get to that advanced filter? You do have to either be a Patreon subscriber of Tactics.Tools or, um, or use um, Meta TFT, which also has uh, an explorer that's free. So th those are the options, I guess, that you have. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, a fantastic uh, call from Kuhn there and, and the statistics really, I mean, especially we have all this extra tankiness. So his ideas like Gumbly, like, do I really care about that? Voidling there is solid. We pick up a Schmolder. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if that's even fitting onto our board. We also hold Nasus pair here over the elite. Oh, no, 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 that's actually our first. Uh, no, 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 that is Nasus pair. Interesting. I. I know maybe it's maybe it's controversial. I kind of maybe would have thought about actually holding um, onto Adaptive Helm, Static Shiv. I like these items a lot. Uh, I would have actually thought about holding onto Elise over Nasus pair there because we we need the Elise to play six Shapeshifter on level eight. Uh, the Nasus too. I mean, it matters to some degree, but it doesn't matter that much. We're, we're eventually going to have a Nico three, hopefully. Uh, Random TG is good. He actually just throws it onto the Shiv here because it's always going there, which I think is fine. Oh, I'm a bit surprised. Uh, that we actually rolled here after we hit a charm. I guess the idea is we want to fit another like good unit onto the board, and now we have two Nico twos, which is something to throw on the board. So his idea is just like find me something to play. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we should be rushing. I mean, maybe we're not going to rush to level eight because level eight's a big upgrade in that you get six shapeshifter on the board. But the downside is you you lose the odds of digging for uh, the uh, the three stars. Um, ooh, look at this! I'm I kind of like this comp. Obviously, like this is a really, really good setup to, to play this comp in, where you've got the uh you guarantee the moguls for a, a tanky shapeshifter frontline, and you guarantee the gamblers for Cassiopeia, which you looked in the we, we looked at the stats earlier. This is one of her best items. Makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, I mean she's a auto attack base champion through and through. Also, look at this Kogma. Shojin, Shojin, Shojin. Is this this Kogma? It's actually not bad on him to just get him casting a bunch and then fueling this Tristana cast a lot. We might lose to this. Yeah, I think we are. Oh my god. Yeah, Shojin, 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 Kogma. That is that is actually uh, this, but uh, but whatever. I mean, you can't be mad about it. But yeah, I'm curious to see, will we go eight or are we going to continue to roll on seven? Because obviously Cassiope 3 is really, really big, but it also is really, really big to like, you know, have the rest of our... Uh, uh, getting six shapeshifter and death cap here for our Shivana, I guess, is the idea. I, I think so. I mean, it's a Shivana three. Shivana is more of a damage dealer now, and yeah, looks like we're gonna sit on uh, on level seven here. Um, we don't quite have it yet, right? We, yeah, we we don't have uh, six shape, even if we wanted to play it uh, right now. Like we couldn't level for it. Um, so yeah, we 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 still need to find either those one costs or the uh, the five costs, the the Briar. So we'll uh. I guess we'll see. We fight this Eternal Winter again. It's This is such a tough matchup for us. I think we're going to lose this again. Yeah, our board is decent, but I, I don't think we can get through that, especially without uh, hitting our three stars. Ooh. Okay, we're going to go for it. Um, It's not on ending to spare, right? I mean, it's just like, unless you want to... No, I mean, who even shields on this board? Nobody. Yeah. I mean, it's either DFG or Luden's Tempest Shivana. I mean, we can do a stats check if, if you guys want, because I have no clue. Uh, DFG or uh, or Luden's Tempest here. I mean, I don't think either of these are like amazing um, on Shivana, but I mean, maybe. I mean, I could see maybe Luden's being good on her. Shivana three, uh, call it item count three, because we're going to get to a third item for her uh, later uh, and do four shape plus uh, tier two plus. I don't want to put the other stuff in. Um, and then go to items. Why is the, the font for this so weird? Um, we're gonna go to orange item here and we can just look. Oh, there is no sample for this at all. Oh my God. Bring the sample down to 30, why not? But at that point, like what's the point? Uh, DFG or Ludens are the ones I'm looking for. So Deathfire, it does, it does Ludens appear? I neither appear on the stats. So you can't even do a stats check. I mean, that is a... Uh, that is rough here. Okay. I kind of like the idea of Ludens. Uh, RFC is actually pretty good on um, on Cassiopeia. The problem is we can't really move it. All right. He's going to go for the DFG. DFG is damage amp um, just on the, the target. So not uh, not bad by any means. We are pretty low econ here, which feels really, really bad for our Gambler's Blade. We are also fighting a Diana too. This lobby is insanely strong. So we're going to lose this fight as well. The upside, 26 HP. Um, so we almost have a top four locked in, but it's so, so close. There is another... Um, Elise, finally, so 
if we were able to hit everything and push level, we'd be able to play this, but I don't think that's happening at this point. I must say, like, we're either going to level here or we're going to hit uh, our three star. I imagine the three star is more important, especially because we're two off, but we'll see how Kuhn uh, decides to prioritize this. Um, he's going to he's gonna go for the level. Okay. So he... You don't... Wait. What? Yeah, he has a shape. Okay, that was that looked very, very weird for a second. Um, last Shivana item here. Blech. Sun, sunfire? IE! Oh, I'm down. I mean, she's a damage dealer. Throw a damage item on her. And wow, he's actually even going to sell the extra Nikos here because he knows we need to win this fight. I love this from Kion. I think this is so smart. Oh, and look how close this fight was. I mean, this was a huge, huge play from Kion. I think it's so easy to get like fed up and be like, ah, oh, I'm just going to, you know, I I'm going to hold all my stuff. But like he knows the chance of rolling down for a Nico 3 is not that high. I am just going to play strongest support here. I'm going to level for six shapeshifter. And this is going to be my spot. Uh, and I'm just going to play it. Also, there's some loud helicopters going over. I, I added a noise gate to my mic, but I don't think that affects that. So I don't know, maybe you guys for the helicopters. Um, I don't think we're winning against this board though. I mean, I think it's top three for a two cost real comp. Think about this comp similar to like Kog'Maw where you're playing for a lot of three star two costs. So you're playing for, you know, not max cap, but a strong mid game and, uh, and you know, capping out at a fourth or a third or something. Um, so I think you absolutely take a third with this comp. And I think this is a really, really fun game to watch. A lot of cool uh, decisions made this game. A lot of wild econ decisions made this game and uh, and showing off a pretty solid comp overall that, you know, can farm top fours, top threes, uh, similarly to the Kog'Maw comp that I think a lot of people like, but this is a lot less popular so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like comment and subscribe check my twitch on my links down below thank you guys for watching